So now we come to a bigger package which arguably is mm, it is a graphics package, it's not part of XORG itself in its own right, but it's obviously central because it's buried in, in the middle of these um, XORG um, packages, uh, packages from the XORG, whereas you can see this has got a different URL, it's not part of XORG per se. Um, it does say it's updated relatively often, you may want to use the latest available 19.3x MESA version. I'm not going to do that because there is an extremely slight chance that it may affect what we're doing. The book's been tested with this particular version. Uh, by all means, go ahead and have a go yourself if you want to. I'm not going to take that risk for a demonstration. If I was doing this myself, I would, but not for a demonstration where I could cause myself problems. There's enough, enough to do as it is without um, creating more complications. So let's move on to that and download these packages. So there's two, a required patch, two patches, a required patch and a recommended patch. So, um, right, okay, so the second one just installs two demo packages. That is um, quite a good idea to, to do just to check that XORG is actually working. So I'd say that's a thoroughly recommended patch, that one, to download. So let's get the required one first. And the recommended one. Right, now of course there's some other requirements now it says XORG libraries, we're in the, actually in the middle of um, building the libraries as a requirement. I wouldn't have thought we'd need to carry on without this to get the complete set of libraries. I would have thought that we've done enough with the XORG libraries, libraries to, to carry on, but we'll find that out. Um, I can't imagine it would be here in the middle if, if it wasn't um, ready to compile. So we'll assume that's complete. Um, libdrm, let's check that one. So the XORG is recommended for that and there's a load of optional ones so these are going to be ones we're going to have to rebuild and Mako which requires markup so, so these are Python modules you can see we've gone to the Python module page again so it looks like these two are straightforward to install libdrm should work apart from other optional dependencies which I'm going to rebuild this for and the same with Mesa it's got well some recommendations actually LibVA um, I'll come back to them in a minute let's let's do these other dependencies first fairly straightforward so to do these because they're not part of XORG itself they're sort of normal Python packages. I'm going to go back to the BLFS directory and go back to my second terminal which has got the normal um, packages that saves into the normal BLFS directory and I'm going to find what section this is in. Uh, we're in markup safe isn't it? Yeah, markup safe. Chapter 13, markup safe, there it is. So only chapter 13, oh, here it is. Python modules, I'm two links away from it. So that's the one we want. We want to download that package. And 
And as we've got both Python 2 and Python 3, I'm going to install, build and install both of them. So I shall copy the two commands in preparation to run them. Extract. Oh, is it capital M? A lot of these are capital M, the Python ones. Yes, it is. Pasting the commands to build both for Python 2 and Python 3, and that was quickly done. And now become the root and install each one. Okay, and Python 3 is just a case of changing the executable name. It's done. I mean, um, you notice some sort of segregating packages that are closely related. You may want to put all the Python modules into a separate directory. I've never done that myself, but that would be, yeah, maybe quite a good idea to do that. Okay, so this has got to be removed as the root. Obviously, write some stuff in there when it's installing. So now this Mako module, let's go back, select Mako, download it. And it's just a Python 3 module here, so I've got to make sure I took these off of my list. Um, I'll cut safe. Four. Python two and three, and then I'm going to do Mako for three. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute, what I've done here. I've um, lost track of what I'm doing now. Downloaded it. Helps if you click the right link. That's better. Oh, it's capital M, of course. Caught out again. Time. Yeah. Okay, yes, I thought I'd downloaded it. So I'll just rub that out, press enter, and it'll cancel it. And go back. So it's just one command to install this, which is this command here. That's the root. Simple. So of course it's obviously written some stuff as root again. So we need to sudo to remove that. <coughs> right, so now we've got libdrm. This is under X libraries. 
DRM. Right, that hasn't been downloaded yet, with looks of it. So I need to make a note to reinstall this because there's some optional packages. Rebuild the DRM. So let's go back to now. Um, it's not part of Xorg, but these are kind of graphics packages. So again, it's a bit of a shady area. Do you want to put it in the Xorg directory, or do you want to stand, stick it with the standard libraries? I'm going to stick it with the standard libraries because it's not part of the Xorg itself. So I'm going to stay on my second terminal where I've got um, most of. Um, build and I'm going to look for libdrm that's the one two four one hundred yeah and download it save it and extract it Okay, and we can start building it. And all these instructions here. So let's just check there's no there's no extra config options given, so let's just paste that in. And fires away building and we can do some tests on this one, ninja test. On test threaded in Nuvo subdirectory is not fail with a 30 second timeout, so that may happen. Well, if that's the one, it's already skipped, it looks so even though it seems to be waiting, unless it's the next test that we're in. Well, 30 seconds seems like a long time when you're waiting for it to happen. And there it is. So we've got, well, it's actually no files. It's, it was skipped in the end. It looks like it hung for a minute rather than 30 seconds. It's 77 seconds on that random one. Unless that's how long the random one took. Anyway, it's, it's passed, so um, we can just install it. And as you see, it's created an extra build directory, so we need to go back up twice. And that's done. So back to Misa. Um, let's now have a look at some of these recommended packages. Let's see what they involve. This libva needs libdrm. That's okay. It recommends Misa, which we haven't got yet. We're wanting to install. So it could be a like a circular dependency again. Um, this needs Wayland, which needs other things. So um, let's just have a look. Libva. What section is this in? Oh, this looks like a load of 
driver type stuff this does. Oh yeah, exalt drivers chapter. Right, and that's actually a chapter that we're going to be um, approaching as we work through this um, chapter 25 for building Xorg. So I'm tempted to leave LibVA for now. Um, All oh right, this does say to provide VA API support um, for some Gallium drivers. Notice, note that there is a circular dependency. You must build libVA first without EG on GLX support. Install this package and then rebuild libVA. <coughs> so um, that looks like it would be a good point to install it now and then reinstall it later when we've got the optional dependencies. Um, recommended right, so it doesn't say it's required. Yes, that works. So, uh, this is libv. Oh, hang on a minute. Did I click on the right one there? Libvi. Yeah. So, rebuild libvi. After we we'll put well, obviously Mises is going to be built next. So there's no point in putting that down as a dependency. But Doxygen and Wayland. are going to be the two dependencies that matter most there. So let's find the. XOR module. So really we need to go back to the XC directory because this is under the XOR part and we need to go back to the section menu. So we'll go up here and find the drivers section. There it is there. And then search for lib VA and that's like another subsection if you like so just press enter and it takes us directly to libva the actual link for the for the package so we can download that now uh, yes it wants a cookie so do a for always allow and download And then there's additional downloads. Um, looks like this is only for an Intel driver. That's the only graphics that I've got in this machine. So I definitely need that. You may not want that depending on your setup. So it's down to you whether you find you need to uh, download this package or not. It does say it's an additional download. It say it's optional or recommended or anything. So we'll see what it says as we go down. So if you're installing this package, which is not at the moment, but this is something maybe to bear in mind, you'll need to remove the older versions of the libraries that are there in the form of libvo, and any symbolic links pointing to them. In addition, any packages that use these files need to be rebuilt. Uh, that's interesting. So there's maybe more to do with upgrading rather than replacing with the same version, but that's probably worth bearing in mind the next time we come round. So let's extract that package. And start the install. So again, it looks like it's fairly standard. Build. Excel config and then make, yes it is. There's no test suite, so we can just do sudo e make install. Okay, that's done. Yeah, the VAAP driver is specifically for the video cards based on Intel GPU, so it is as I thought. 
and it looks like we've got to extract that in the current directory because it's extracting the archive as if it was in the directory above so let's copy this from the web page uh, wrong one that one so we can copy both these commands here Okay, and now we can configure same commands as before and build it as well. No test suite, so I just install it. And that's the VA done for now, anyway. So we need to go up to and remove. VA. That's done. Recommended also lib VDPAU, VDPAL. Again, it's another driver package with looks of it. So let's put the drivers that I've installed in, make a note of them. Dependencies has this got Xorg, Doxygen Graph is text live, yeah, so it's the usual thing. So again I'm gonna make another note. Um, this is lib VD power. Um, certainly I think this graph is, has got quite a few dependencies yeah it has, you can see that it will be quite onerous to go through this at this moment I think we'd come, you see there it's got XORG libraries as a dependency still not sure whether that means complete XORG libraries or what we've got at the moment I imagine what we've got at the moment is just about all of the libraries but we've still got a few more packages in this chapter to install, not too many um, so I imagine most of the XOR libraries are installed but um, it's not quite clear um, just looking at that so let's do this lib VD power now so this is a driver let's go back and select that one. Download it. So it's just got runtime dependency, it's fine. So it's another Ninja install, so let's extract it. At least these packages are tiny to reinstall them, it's not too onerous, it just means a lot of um, typing to extract them. Uh, this is libdrm, you want this one. So that builds it, nice and quick. Ninja test to test the package. Okay, it didn't actually test anything. <laughs> it looks like it found nothing it needed to test. Okay. It could be that that's a dependency that we haven't installed, is um, why that's skipped. Uh, test install. Yep, that's done. Oh, 
Right, okay, it was two directories that we were in. Two directories down. So that's done for now. Um, so that's a rebuild, that one. Lib VD. Get rid of that one for now. Back to Mesa, what have we got? LLVM, I'm sure this is one of these big packages that's got quite a few dependencies. Yes, it has. So I'm going to try and avoid building that one at the moment. Um, but Mesa is going to have to be a rebuild, obviously. So now I'm going to build it. I'm going to state that I need to rebuild it, put it in my list. got lots of recommended and optional dependencies and you can see one of them actually is in protocols which is a requirement for plasma so that might be the time to rebuild it unless we can't avoid it and have to rebuild it before then it'll have to be rebuilt twice then So I'll just make a note of those dependencies. And the thing to do now is to actually go and um, install it. Uh, sorry, download it first and then install it. So let's download it. So that was a couple of package. package. Oh yeah, we've already done this, haven't we? I just remembered, just realised. Oh, I can't actually stop that. Let me extract it. Sorry for this. I don't want to press Control C or anything. It'll probably crash out of um, links. And escape is not working. So I'll press escape now. No, back, back arrow works. Yeah. So let's do the first patch. And the second patch. And it says if Python 2.7 is not installed, adjust the script file and test suite to use Python 3. We've got Python 2.7 installed. The measurements above and the contents below are for a full build. Many people do not wish to install drivers they cannot use, so the following paragraphs explain how to limit drivers and give an example where which can be reduced or amended as necessary. Okay, let's have a go at this. So now select the drivers you wish to install for x86 architecture. The available Gallium drivers are auto. Alternatively, a choice from i915, Nuvo, R300, 600, Radian SI, SVJ, SWRAST and Virgil. The latter is recommended if you intend to run the system under QEMU. I don't. If you wish to build all the available Gallium drivers, use auto. Now... I know that for an Intel, that's the driver I'm going to have to use. Um, there's also some non Gallium driver, DRI driver, drivers available, which are auto or choice of i915, i9615, and so on. Use auto to build all available DRI drivers or use an empty string of DRI underscore drivers if you wish to build if you wish to only build Gallium drivers the platforms available for x86 Linux, Linux are x11 
Wayland DRM and surface list by not specifying anything. The Meson build system will build for all these platforms if you have the dependencies identical. If you had specified the platforms equals auto. Modify the commands below for your des desired drivers. The drivers list below will cover most modern video cards and virtual machines. For help in selecting drivers, see this. So, um, for my Intel chip, it looks like all I'd need is the 915 and the 965. Uh, let's go to this website and see if it offers any more information. So hardware drivers and software drivers. Let's have a look at this. Okay, that's not actually taking us anywhere specific, unfortunately. That's DRI drivers. So you'd need to do a lot of reading up here to find out exactly what drivers you need if you're not sure um, having built Gen 2 many times I'm pretty sure that the 915 is like a default package for all Intel drivers and the 965 is the package for newer Intel drivers um, let's see if I can't go to the Gen 2 website. Um, let's see, because they've got a table there which indicates. Uh, is it this one here? No, it's not this one here. Is it the XOR drivers? No, it's not that one. This one here, graphics adapters. No. Um, let's try again. Gen 2 XOR drivers. Just been to sort of server. Oh yes, this is it. Okay, so in, in Google I search for, and I spell it right, Gen 2 XORG drivers Intel and it's the first link which comes up. So if I click that again, and this table gives you an idea. <clears throat> it tells you what generation the chips, the graphics chips it is, not the, I don't believe this is the, yeah, it's the graphics processing unit generation, not the uh, chip itself and you can see this here this is what this is a variable they use in Gen 2 you can see what um, you'd need to select for the um, where is it for the DRI this will be driver because the DRI can take uh, where was it 
yeah, the DRI driver can take I5 or I965, but for the Gallium driver, it's got to be 915. So you can see if you've got a Generation 4 GPU, Intel GPU onwards, you want to select the I965 driver for the DRI. But anything earlier, well, basically Gen 2 and Gen 3, because Gen 1 is not supported, you'd have to use another driver like SVGA or something like that. Um, you need to select the 915 for the DRM, DRI, sorry. So um, I'm going to go with Gallium DRV equals 915 and DRI drivers equals 965 because I haven't got any of these other, well I certainly haven't got an NVIDIA card built in or, or a Radeon. Um, arguably I could install these as well as they're basically software drivers I think as it says here for window systems um, and this software raster one uh, sorry this one's here these ones here they're part of the gallium aren't they they're, I imagine SVGA might not be a software one um, could be like a basic hardware one that one but I'm going to go with that and hope it works. If it doesn't work, then it's something I'm going to have to rebuild. So let's go here. And I'm going to copy that bit there. So I'm hopefully I'm covering most people who've got an in, well, yeah, just about everybody should have a, an Intel chipset. Um, Obviously, if you've got a, for example, an NVIDIA you want to boot with that one, um, you probably want to select i915 and or the Nuvo driver. Um, one thing I'd say is if you've got one of these hybrid chips with the, like the um, NVIDIA and the Intel, where it's output on a single um, connector to the monitor what they call I think um, oh I can't remember what they're called now no it's gone for me they're like a hybrid where the 2D stuff's handled by the Intel card and the 3D stuff's ultimately handled by the um, NVIDIA card Op Optimus that's it Optimus that's what it's called um, you'd probably have to default to the Intel at this point to get it working and then I don't think there's anything in the PLFS book about Optimus um, but there is a package or a, a project called Bumblebee I believe which um, allows you to set that up correctly to work correctly in Linux so you might have to um, go it alone on that to get that working but I would just stick with the Intel, whatever version Intel GPU you've got. Just build with that for now. And um, if you need the NVIDIA part of the Optimus setup to to look into that after you've got your, your windowing system working. So I'm going to export this so it's available to any shells that might spawn. And then we've got the DRR drivers, which are going to be 965. And I'm going to export that as well. And then we've got the commands to install Mesa. So again, they're creating a separate build directory. Like we do with a lot of these packages. Changing into it got some config commands here so let's just copy them in at the moment and inspect the instructions to see if there's any other options there may be some here so we've got that's already specified DRI drivers okay it's using environment variables so we probably didn't need to export them but that's not, not really a problem Gallium drivers Provide support for MS Windows games designed for DX9, that's okay. 
won't be running that so I'll leave that as false so it's saying you can set that to true if you know you need that um, adding in gallium support Valgren's false because I haven't got that installed dbuild test equals true so I should cause test code to be enabled yeah so I'm going to enable that as well so minus capital D build tests equals true and they've mentioned it there but you can see the DGLX equals DRI has been set so that's probably a default that you you won't want to change so I'm just going to copy the rest of this in it does actually unset them here I'm going to run this by itself in case it fails. I don't want to have to set these drivers again, so I'm going to go back, just complete that command, press enter. Right, means I'll need to git program. That means it does, sorry. I think that was a requirement, but let's just see what the config did. So it's got Zlib threads, expat. Oh, so it could be that we need to put a little VM in as a dependency. Because it seems to fail immediately after this. There's nothing else indicating it was looking for Git. Let's have a look at this log file, see if there's any further information. Let's just go to the end. Well, it does actually say that it needs LLVM greater than 8.0, so it looks like we've got to go back and rebuild uh, um, LLVM, unfortunately. So let's get this in order. Let's see what it says up here. It was just recommended. All oh, right, it's required for the Gallium 3D. That's why it's complaining. So we do need to install it because I want to install the Gallium support. Okay. So let's see what we can get away. This requires CMake. Oh dear. Um, okay, I might be able to get away with this now. WV. Curl. I'm not sure if we've already got that installed or not. And the live archive. So it looks like we can get away with installing these packages in a minimal way. Um, right, so let's now tidy up Mesa. We'll have to come back to this. And we'll go to the lowest one of these. Um, now we've got libxml. Let's go back to the 
main BLFS directory. Yeah, we've got LibXML 2.9.0. I don't think we've got LZO or Nettle. So let's see what the dependencies these are, because these might be fairly straightforward. Yeah, that one's all right. I think Nettle. Yeah, we can do this one. They're fairly small, and it will complete this little branch. I think LibArchive is used by a, a few things. So this will be worth doing, so having to rebuild LibArchive. Lib so let's do Nettle, which is one of the security patches, uh, sorry, packages that we skipped over initially because um, I had a feeling that we'd have to install this one. That I'm sure there's going to be one or two others like this where we skipped over because there wasn't any direct need from at the time, but where we would be needing them, as you can see now. So let's get our second console up, which has got our normal BLFS packages, and look for Nettle. Okay, there it is. Let's download it. Save it. Okay. So let's begin by extracting it. And we'll start by building it. So there's no extra config options. Let's just run it in. Oh, okay, has the mouse gone a bit funny again? Not sure why this is happening. I'm going to right click, yeah, it's selecting. So what I'm going to do again, like I did before, I'm not sure if it's me or if it's maybe a bug or something, I'm not sure. Just going to restart the mouse daemon um, GPM restart. That seemed to fix it last time. Yep. It's all good, let's test it. I'll make check. Okay, so we've got all 99 tests passed and all three tests passed. So that sounds good. So now we can install it. That's complete. And move on to LZO. Let me mark that one off as complete. Nettle. 351 LZO is under chapter 9. So I'll go back, look for LZO. There it is. Download. See what we've got for this. So there's no extra config again. Let's extract it. And then copy configure and make commands. So it says to test the results, issue make check, all the checks should pass, now issue make test to run the full suite of tests. So slightly different to usual. Make check. Okay, that looks good. Now make test.
Okay, good. All tests passed. Now you're ready to install LZO. So sudo minus e make install and that's done. So now we're on to libarchive. It's got all its dependencies satisfied. There's Markov LZO. Libarchive is also in chapter nine. So let's go back. Let's just go up a page and again. And there it is there. Download. So what have we got for this one? Fairly straightforward. So it's got a few extra command explanations, but they're not actually in the example they've given. So it's just saying you haven't installed the XML2 package, libxml2 or nettle to specify that they're not there, but they're there, so we don't need to modify any of the commands. So let's grab the commands to put in, extract the package, paste the commands in and wait for it to run to build. While that's building, I'll capture the command to make to run the tests. Okay, and now I can run the tests. Okay, that's good, all passed. So we can install the package and tidy up. Mark that one as complete, lib archive. So now we're on to curl. I can't remember if we installed this one or not. Doesn't look like it. Uh, what's it? Under 17. Yeah, I haven't marked it off either if we have installed it. So, what dependencies has this got? So, there's a load of optional ones, they're not recommended. Just make CA, which we've already got. Um, so, arguably, this one, yeah, I'd say this one should be reinstalled at some later point, not now though, because uh, it will just get in the way of what we're doing. So rebuild, um, curl, after, um, I'll bring xorg, So let's go to our 
second terminal again and we're looking for curl there it is download it save so there's an optional one there S tunnel is one of the security um, packages I think off the top of my head uh, so that's again something you can run um, so it's probably not worth running the tests at the moment it says some are known to fail anyway so just ignore that for now Okay, so let's copy these commands. Let's see if there's any configure extra configure commands. So enable thread resolvers there with CA path. So we've got that. So we haven't got the Kerberos 5 support yet. And this is to build with GNU TLS instead of SSL, open SSL. So we don't need that. With the CA bundle, we'll leave that in. SSH support to curl. I don't think we've got SSH even. Come to think of it. No, not got that yet. Uh, is there anything? Oh, yeah, there is some behind here. No. So it's something we'd have to change when we reinstall because SSH is something we'll be installing. But for now, there's no need for that either. See our res, so that must be an optional. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Um, see our res library, it's not mentioned anywhere. Unless it's given, oh there it is there, so we haven't installed that, so we can't put that in. So we just take the configure as it is this time round, and next time we'll be making modifications. Okay, so now we've become the root and install the package. So it says simple test to install the new, to test the new installed curl. Do this command curl trace debug dump text http example dot com. So I'm just going to switch to this window to capture that. It's become the normal user to do this. That seemed to do something. And curl trace ASCII D dot text example dot com. All oh, right, okay. This is because the line feed has been copied, so I need to copy this. All oh, right, it's just the curl in front of the trace command. It hasn't kept it because I control C'd it, so I just need to copy this bit. And put a curl in front of that. And 
And it says inspect the locally created trace files, debug dump.txt and d.txt which contain the version, downloaded files, information, etc. One file has a time for each action logged. So let's debug dump. Yeah, that's got oh, they're probably codes I imagine. But you can see the stuff there, that looks good. And the other one was d.txt. Yeah, this one's got timestamps on it. So that that's a test. Those tests seem to be fine. Basic functionality is working. So there's no other, nothing else to do for that one. So we can tidy that up for now. Make a note that that needs to, well I've installed it, it needs to be reinstalled, which is in section 17 was it, I think, yeah. 